welcome back my dear students so today we will be dealing with the last topic of this chapter that is Ma mauren administration so in your syllabus this is the main thing that we need to complete so today i'll be discussing regarding the subtopic mauren administration so let's begin so uh mauren administration this is this is the word that uh, goes on and on till now and also till now we are also under certain administration done by the our superiors so at that period of time also like there in uh, for a smooth functioning of a empire or a kingdom to run there was a administration so let's understand what kind of administration did uh, mauren empire followed so there were three great rulers so three great ruler is chandragupta maurya Bindusara and the Asoka. So the three great rulers were not only the empire builders but also able and efficient administrators. So the Mauryan Empire is famous not just for the big big structures that they used to build, but also they were able and very efficient administration. Mm, they had. I'm sorry, and uh, it's a mistake. They had. They had a highly centralized system of government which aimed at achieving the welfare of the people. Welfare of the people. Good. Goodness. Goodness. So that the standard of living of a people was um, understood. Uh, socioeconomic conditions were uplifted. Okay. So, um, Mauryan administration had a highly centralized system of government which aimed at achieving the welfare of the people. Under this Mauryan administration, the most important was the king. So let's understand what does what kind of role did he play? The king was a supreme authority in the entire administrative setup. He had absolute control over the department every every department okay so what was the important role important role of who king was to maintain social order and protect his people so it's very simple okay so the uh, role of the king let's understand the role of the king is that he was the supreme author um, supreme authority in every entire administrative setup that he was the one who do, who used to decide what are the policies to be implemented what kind of punishments to be given and what are what are the things that they need to advance for their empire those kind of decision was all taken by the king so he had absolute control over every department so uh, there were different departments also we will be learning in subsequent slides so now uh, the main important role that king used to follow was the main function was to maintain social order and protect his people and the responsible for the welfare of the people as i've already said that they aimed in achieving the welfare of the people so this was like the rule further let's talk about asoka because he was one of the greatest ruler in indian history plus he was one of the uh, good king because he had a enlightened uh, because he became enlightened after the kalinga war so he was he had a change of heart so uh, under asoka the relationship between the king and subject acquired new dimensions so chandragupta maurya was there and bindusar was there and asoka was there but when the when asoka became king new the relationship between uh, subject and the king emerged because what happened was his comment he said that all men are my children in one of his rally or in one of his speech he said that all men are my children this this quotation showed that asoka wanted to rule over his subject but like a father and he always tried to establish a personal contact with his subject say that 
it says that uh, by this quotation it says that all men are my my children it proves that Asoka wanted to have a good rapport with the people and he wanted to uh, do goodness goodwill uh, goodwill justice for every people so he wanted to have a personal contact with his subject because this in artha sastra the book written by chanakya says that a king there is a separate chapter uh, for every concept or every topic in artha sastra and in Artha Sasta only, it says that the king must be accessible to his officers and subjects all of the time. Otherwise, it might create a confusion and disaffection in the government. So that's why Asuka always wanted to be in contact with the subject. Not only just his subject, but with his department holders also the council of ministers now let's talk about the different one after king is council of ministers king sought advice from councillors before taking any final decision so whenever any uh, decision had to be taken a king always referred his council of ministers and uh, discussed about the topics regarding what are what will what should be the final decision decision on particular matter so king took advice from council of ministers and mantri parishad also we can say council did not always have a stable position market council did not have a stable position but sometimes they could act as a limitation on absolute power of the king it says that council didn't had a stable position so according to king's preferences those councils uh, councillors could be changed but what was the main important uh, uh, point was that councillors like mantri parishads used to act as a certain limitations to the king's power so that it's for the betterment of the people if a con if a king says that okay from tomorrow onwards this particular section of a society will have to pay a heavy 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 taxes but the councillor uh, councillor says that no the king you are doing a very wrong i wrong uh, you are giving a very wrongful uh, rule uh, you have to you have to stop it and you have to change it so then only the uh, people will be satisfied so this kind of things the limit limitations uh, they used to put on king decisions sometimes so now let's talk about the members of Con mantri parishad okay it was selected by the king those members sure will or should always be long from brahmin and chatriyas and uh, this strength what do you mean by strength member the strength of a uh, um, members varied from time to time but there had a inner council members okay uh, that mantri parishad had inner council members uh, they consisted of three to four councillors which include the chief minister mahamantri and a royal priest which you used to call we can call as a purohita okay uh, so um, the members were selected by the king uh, that members sh uh, should be or who they were like they should be the uh, they should be from a clan of brahmins and kshatriyas but also uh, that inner council member uh, like had three to four councillors but uh, that would be including chief minister mahamantris and a royal priest or a purohita so moving to the next slide let's talk about revenue administration so uh, in administration different different things uh, make a country's administration worthwhile so revenue it's totally about finance or money okay so let's talk about revenue administration central administration was carried out by numbers of departments so central let's talk about central uh, um, administration 
so revenue department was considered as one of the most important department why it because revenue means money so in a in a in order uh, in order to survive an empire needs a huge huge amount of money to run so uh, in modern empire they mainly focused on revenue department so revenue department was looked by two official that is chief revenue collector which can be called as samaharta samaharta uh, this chief revenue collector was responsible for uh, collection of revenue in cash and a kind from different parts of the country so it's very simple uh, revenue administration in modern empire were looked by two officials number one is chief revenue collector which uh, the name can be called as samaharta and he was responsible for collecting revenue or a revenue in cash revenue in cash from different parts of the country means till the mauryan empire like mauryan empire is a huge empire and it had a in it has uh, like uh, uh, under it there were so many countries so from all over the country uh, till where mauryan empire had been expanded the revenue were collected now number 2 is let's talk about two uh, royal treasurer sanidhata sanidhata means royal treasurer means a person responsible for storage of royal treasures which included tax grain precious stones etc so tax understood precious stone also understood why grains because people need survival people need to eat for survival so this royal treasurers royal treasurer were responsible for collecting grains different different food items so much and so forth so that their entire population or entire subject which were on the mauryan empire could sustain or live so what were uh, uh let's talk about that uh, we have already talked about in a first slide that uh, mauryan empire's ruler were great builders so the items expenditure included where that money collected money used to be in uh, expend uh, where that money used to be used in what kind of purposes that the revenue collected uh, by these two persons would uh, give them like they were uh, like they were used for salary salary to give to the public officials the ministers the purohitas uh, army commander chief collector treasurer accounts writers etc this were the person they had like they used to give salary to this person salary to this office bearers so uh, the items means on where their revenue collected revenue could have been uh, spended this are just a list of certain things that um, the empire used to uh, the collected revenue wherever um, from different parts of the country they collected certain revenue or taxes and they would have given salary to this these persons okay now okay now let we are talking about the salary right so uh, the salary varied from 12000 pannas to 48000 pannas and heavy fines were imposed for stealing government finances so not only just uh, giving salary but uh, mauryan administration had a um, had a certain sections of uh, giving punishment if a person is found stealing certain things from government finances means in a, in our now a commonly word we can say at a corruption right a government and appear uh, also many corruptions are taking every now and then but in that period of time when mauryan administration was there there were a, like a, they had a, a severe punishment to those kind of person so the government spent a lot on public works like construction construction activities as i have already said that empire builders they are empire builders so they Uh, invested lots of money mauryan administration in mauryan empire that kings used to uh, invest lots of lots of money for doing public work construction and maintenance of such as roads wells rest house irrigation work planting medicinal herbs etc so 
by knowing this kind of things like they had an efficient administrative setup and people were much happy in that period of time because uh, the government the administration run very very smoothly at that period of time now let's talk about administrative justice okay justice to all without any discrimination one of, was one of the most important principles of asoka's dharma means that without any discrimination racial without any racial discrimination without any caste color sex uh, caste color creed sex with biological differences like either you are male or a female the justice would have been served to you so justice nay justice was administered how a justice uh, had been given to a particular person justice was administered by a body of officials known as mahamats 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 in the cities in the cities like um, Now then, they also the modern um, uh, administration or modern empire also had ruler areas ruler areas and urban areas so in ruler areas like uh in urban areas mahamats used to uh look after the administrative pol- administrative justice but in uh, ruler areas raku rajukas used to administer justice so afternoon we are talking about justice so if a person is found guilty of certain things they have been given they they used to be punished so what kind of punishment um imposing heavy fines mutilation of limbs cutting of nose saving of hairs this were kind of a uh, punishment that the uh, person who had committed a crime used to get apart from this punishment that punishment was not totally uh, abolished uh, abolished but they used to get but also ka uh, before giving a death punishment they used to give a three day relief uh, three day relief those who were condemned to death punishment punishment so uh, at that period of time also like justice was served by with different kinds of uh, punishment Le- there were different kinds of punishment lives uh, there there were like different kinds of person who give justice to the people they have different kinds of uh, person like they have different officials for the urban areas and they have different officials for the uh, rural areas such as mahabats for the ur- urban areas and the raku rakujas for the Uh, rajukas was the in our ruler areas so now let's talk about the provincial administration during mauryan period whole empire was divided into provinces means provinces means states okay so it says that uh, in mauryan administration the whole empire was divided into provinces which is called states and the every state this every provinces was under a governor every provinces was under a government governor who was directly elected by the king so uh, it's very simple okay mauryan administration mauryan in mauryan period the empire was divided into different provinces okay different provinces so uh, governor used to be the head of that provinces like now we have chief minister right in india every um, state has a chief minister so governor were there but this governor were elected by directly elected by the king so this is how it was related but sometimes it it became hereditary in nature also as governor were appointed from the royal family too so this governor who used to elect by the king can be of a uh, hereditary in nature and uh, it could have been a uh, from a royal family so this becomes your provincial administration now let's talk about district administration so now state was there right provinces was there now again there was district administration okay so district was subdivided the provinces was again this provinces now i am talking about one province okay so this province this particular province was divided into uh, district so many districts also there same as sikkim is also divided into 
different state in different district at that period of uh, about of time this provinces was also divided into district districts officers were not appointed by the king but a provincial chief now what happened was that uh, this was uh, district officers was not appointed by king but the provincial chief was there to head this one uh, they used to elect the provincial chiefs district officials would like the district officials of modern day indian civil services like it is just like the same modern day that modern day means we follow certain things like right? so in a uh, in, uh, in like we are in a uh, Indian country and we are in a state of Sikkim and we follow in the category of certain district right so at that modern period of time also they used to follow certain things so it is just a comparative you know, thing now uh, they followed like uh, they follow the combined judicial administrative responsibility combined judicial and uh, judicial or administrative responsibility combined judicial as well as administrative responsibility for that particular people now there were three class of people like three class of officers rajukas we already talked about yuktas and mahamats mahamats okay i'm the spelling is wrong mahamats okay uh rajukas means district mag magistrate yuktas means subordinate officials mahamad means special case of officers okay special case officers special case officers like rajukas manage the department this rajukas manage the department of justice survey whenever uh, there there used to be survey assessment of land uh, deals with secretarial and accountant work looked after judicial administrative in urban areas so raju rajukas uh, Rajukas district mag mag magistrate were used to about like judicial administration and uh, as well as ruler. So Rajukas used to manage for this uh, justice, uh, survey, assessment of land, whether this land is good for making any kind of construction construction uh, construction activities or not, or whether the uh, irrigation pipeline is uh, good good enough to hold this season or not this kind of things were uh, seen by rajukas and for the yuktas yuktas used to uh, okay <coughs> many things like yuktas and mahamats also <coughs> used to look over this kind of thing so if you want to understand detailly you can see in your uh, book also and you can add up also the notes also so now let's move about village administration village administration is the lowest administrative unit and uh, the village officials were directly responsible to the gopa and village was governed by a village headman so it's very simple village administration so now let's talk about city administration all communities was divided this in cities the all administration was divided into six communities and each committee had a five members so each committee has a five members so um, industrial act foreign guest uh, birth and death uh, birth and death trade commerce weight and measures supervision of public sales and manufactured good uh, taxes on the article souls where be uh, they used to uh, look after for these things like these six communities acted together in a time of emergency and major construction these communities committees used to look after industrial act who were the foreign guests who are born now who just died and what kind of trades we are doing and the, and what are the things that uh, that used to be uh, taken into granted and what kind of uh, manufactured good we need to supply to other countries and what kind of things we need to import in other in our countries and what kind of taxes should be levied upon certain articles to be sold those kind of things were discussed by this six commit committees in modern administration so this much like the in your chapter modern administration a modern empire uh, this much the thing these are the things that we have to study or we did study in uh, the video so kindly not just complete your work but solve the questions also solve 
short answer answer and long answer too so i hope you have understood uh, more or less about modern administration or modern empire so if you have any doubt you can again open your uh, open this link and uh, listen carefully so that you will be more confident enough to write uh, this time and more confident enough to write in your examination so till then stay safe and take care and uh, god bless you